Thank you very much. Um, it's a it's a great pleasure to be here uh, with, with you all and uh, to present you a very special guest for this lecture, um, Hugh McLean, uh, that will focus uh, on a topic that is particularly complicated for many of us and is also particularly tricky uh, on a political point of view for student organizations and student movements uh, that is funding. Uh, funding can mean many things. Funding can mean opportunities. Funding can mean uh, uh, tools for independence. Funding can also mean uh, dependence, ties of dependence of political, uh, strict connection, lack of freedom. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a tool that can be used both to make the same movement grow and to destroy its independence. And uh, we are going to, to talk about that uh, with a person that is not just a good um, theoretical uh, expert or a person that is just uh, within the environment, but a person that uh, has been always within the funding environment, but also always supporting our movement, supporting the student movement, particularly the Global Student Forum in the last years. Um, and doing that with some principles that he will be able to, to, to explain and also he will be able to, to introduce within a broader approach. So thanking uh, Hugh for, for everything that has been done already at the beginning of this uh, uh, lecture. Uh, I would like to, to give uh, Hugh the floor so he can open to us this fantastic, and in some cases also frightening <laughs> world of funding. Thank you, Giuseppe. Can I just hear that, um, see that everyone can hear me okay? I'm not sure what you do, but if you can send me a sign, I'll just assume, <laughs> all right, I get a thumbs up from Giuseppe. Um, thanks very much. So this is a great privilege um, and something I've been looking forward to for a, uh, a long while. Um, I think Giuseppe is completely right. I believe that um, the students' movement particularly is absolutely essential for um, the not only the future of the planet, but the future of uh, democratic uh, societies. And the work that we're doing here is, is completely fundamental. So for me, it's a great, a great honor uh, to be, um, uh, to be in, engaging and talking to you today. And I, I really do mean that because I, I think it's completely crucial. I also think that, in fact, the whole area of student work is uh, overlooked very significantly uh, and that the impulse is usually from the powers of those that with money and power are to do one of two things. One is to ignore you <laughs> or try to, and the other is to try to co-opt you. And I think we see this uh, in the funding more than, than anything else. So I think that it's absolutely important for us to be focusing on this today. And I'm really, really pleased uh, that, that you have come. Um, so what I would like to do, I'm not sure if you're all ready with your responses button, um, and it might just be that um, you know each other and we can't really do introductions. I see names that I, I do know, and that's wonderful to see some, some names that I do know. I do hope that you will feel free to engage, interrupt, and speak at, at any point. If you have got the um, bandwidth that we can see your face, it'll be good. I've got it on gallery view. And um, there's not too many of you, so we should be able to see um, everyone. So if you're comfortable with that and you're able to, I'd be happy with that. But just as a way of getting to know, um, I'll tell you a few things about myself, and then I want to find out a few things about you. If you do not hear me at any point, please send a sign. I'm happy to, to repeat uh, it. So I'm a, a South African. I'm back in South Africa at the, at the moment, which is wonderful after two years, but I've been stuck in London for a while where I've lived and worked for 15 years. But um, if there's one thing that makes you very clear that you're an African, uh, that is go to London for a while and you, <laughs> you recognize that you have a lot more in common with Africa than you do with, uh, with, with Britain particularly or, or Europe. Uh, and that's always been a refreshing and, and wonderful uh, realization for, for me. So it's good to be seeing you and speaking to you today. But I've been involved with uh, funding uh, ever since the early 90s. Um, 
and I've been working with the um, Open Society Foundations until last year, actually, and I finished my contract there, so I'm now a civilian. Um, and I shall be working as a civilian and an activist, uh, hopefully in this area for uh, as, as long as is possible. So um, that's, I think, probably enough uh, about, about me. Um, I just wanted a few things to, about you as, as a group, because I think they're going to be quite important for the way we think about our uh, sessions. So if you're ready with your indicator button, um, and if you could turn your screens to gallery, if you go to view and just make sure it's on gallery, then we'll be able to see the flashing lights. I'm going to ask you a few questions so that I do know. So the first question I have uh, for all of you is, um, how many of you are here from um, school students' unions? Well, let's try the other one, because that might be less. How many of you are here from, from universities or tertiary? Can you just give me a thumbs up or an indication or something on the signs? Okay, so I think a lot, well, more, I can still see some of you still sleeping on the, on the button, but I'll keep on asking just to see. It gives me an idea. Is there anyone here? So thank you for that. You can thumbs down. Anyone here from a school students union? One, two, hallelujah, wonderful, thank you. So three, okay, that's, that's great. So I'm, I'm going to assume that most of you are from tertiary but, um, and that some of you are from general, but I have to say that what I'm going to try to commit to do is to say things that are relevant to both, to all of student organizing and to sustainable financing for all student organizations. So, but I think there are differences and they're important to, to recognize. So now please be ready with this one, because I really would like to, to see, just to get a sense, we, we claim to be an international group. Let me see first from your buttons. I want to check which continents you are from, or maybe which from, let's do associations actually. We'll do the regional platforms first. Um, so those of you that are linked to All Africa um, Students Union, could you just indicate something? I see two, I see three. Four, five, okay, that's great. Six, do we have a six? All right, thank you. Um, those of you that are part of the Commonwealth uh, Students Federation, so thumbs down, let's see. Anyone from Commonwealth? One, anyone else? Um, is that no one from the Commonwealth Students? Possibly, um, yeah, okay, one, fabulous. Thanks, Chibadem. Um, let's have a look at the uh, European Students uh, Federation. Let's do let's do ESU and OBESU. One, two, three, four, five with Giuseppe. Okay, Latin American Students Federation. All right, no one from um, from the Spanish speaking world. I'll improve on my Spanish, I hope, by next by the next academy, I'll do my best. Um, and independent um, organizations and unions from elsewhere. Okay, so I'm gonna assume, I'm gonna assume we mostly covered one, two, three, okay. Um, anyone here from North America, just by the way. Okay, one. Um, I would like to, so now this is the other one because it really helps me with some of the sessions. Those of you that are, um, have been to the, the, these sessions before. So let me see if you've attended something before, could you just indicate? Okay, one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna assume most of you. Okay, it's coming up quite a lot. Let me ask then, is there anyone who this is the, the, maybe the first session? Is there any fresh one like me? Nobody fresh like me. All right, so that's good because I have looked at the previous uh, sessions and I'm going to assume 
um, that that is part of uh, it as well. Now, this is the trick question for you. Is any of you a holder of a student card that is issued either by your student union or your national student union? Do you actually have a card, anything that you can, okay, one, two, three, few student cards, four or five, okay, a few. Does any of you have, okay, hands down, there's a few of you. Does any of you have an international student um, card, an ISIC card, anyone at all? Two ISIC cards, three, Okay, so three of you are members of this wonderfully mysterious organization, which we'll get to later. Um, that is the International Association of uh, International Students. Um, and we'll talk about that. So look, the first thing then is, I just wanted to do that so we have a sense of, of where we're at. And I, I know I'll assume that you've had some of the discussions, but we'll check it as we go. Please feel free to interrupt at any time. Um, Either, let me just change the chat to general so you can put a question in there. Um, everyone in meeting, I've got the chat on. So I can see there, send me a question or just wave if you wish to do that. So I think the first thing to say is, is that um, I'm going to try to, um, given that we've got such a wide range of people here, I'm going to try to pitch this in very general terms. I know there are specific questions related possibly to your geographic context, or to whether you're a university student or a school student, there might be different questions around funding. But I think it's really important for us to look at what are the broader questions that relate to, to strategy for sustainable financing, because the broader questions are bigger than the immediate ones. The immediate questions come and go. There might be an opportunity with the funder that is here today and gone tomorrow. But for the student movement, the strategic challenge that remains is the question, how do we fund an independent democratic uh, student movement on its own uh, on its own money to do its own thing and the idea would be what i would aim to do for the session is to try to identify some of those broader principles um, but i would like them to be relevant for your individual organizations so whatever your student union is to think of some principles that could be relevant for you and i'd like you to look for that but i think we're also asking the more collective questions or the questions about our shared responsibility. What are the principles that are important for your regional platform? Um, and what are the regionals that are important for students globally? So the organization through the Global Students Forum, what are the ideas and uh, principles there? So I'm gonna put up my power slide now, but that's just by way of saying what I want to achieve with this system, It's um, with this discussion today. It's some of the broader ideas, but um, it is certainly um, um, something that can be both um, relevant to you individually, but something that could be relevant to you broadly uh, as well. Um, can you see my screen? Jeff, Giuseppe, I can see you, the face I can. All right, so let me just. Perfectly. Thank you. you can also I do not have. Mode. I do not okay. have a. Tree. Big, um, yeah. just, uh, dinner is for four. Yeah. You can see, right. So cook it here. Thank you. So I don't have many uh, PowerPoint slides because I'd rather speak to you directly. I'll keep this up for, for three slides, but I just want to go through the broad architecture of discussion. Someone needs to mute if you don't mind. Um, so uh, let me go back one. Right. So this is our session today. And um, I'm not sure if you know who those two guys are, some of the colleagues from us who might do, but uh, this is my generation of students that inspired me. It's Tietzi Mashinini at the top and uh, Jose Siatlo, uh, Siatlolo, and they were of course the leaders of the 1976, some of the leaders of the 1976 students uh, uprising, some of the more prominent students in, in South Africa uh, from Soweto. Um, so they're about, they're my generation. Um, both of them, I'm sad to say, are no longer with us. I think um, they were abandoned by, by the movement. 
Um, one died in Soweto in, in uh, the 2000s. I think that was Kotso uh, Siatlolo. But Tsietsi um, Mashinini, who was one of the prominent voices of the South African students, died in exile in the early 90s and unwell, and I think largely under, abandoned by the movement. It says to me a lot about, um, uh, about students, uh, the power of their leadership, but also their place in, in social movements and in liberation uh, struggles. So they remain a continuing um, inspiration for, for me. Today, we're looking at sustainable financing. Um, it's the Global Students Forum Academy. If you're in the wrong meeting or on the wrong plane, um, feel welcome <laughs> to stay. But um, this is what we're doing um, to today. So just the architecture of the, of the session. Um, we have, um, I wanted to do an input and have our initial section until now, it's quite a bit shorter actually. So we, we thought until about 3.30, but maybe perhaps a little bit longer. And then we would still have a, a, a half an hour break. Is that right, Giuseppe? Um, and then we've got structures for probably two. If I look, 27 participants. I'm not sure, Giuseppe, if you can think about that in the meantime, if we can do two or three breakout sessions, just for a short discussion, I've structured some questions, and then we can come together for a, uh, a wrap up. So the aims of the session, as I said, I've, I've Right. Giuseppe, what does that mean? 10 in a group. Clapping, I'm clapping. Yeah. Okay, all right, fine, you're waving. Um, the aims of the session, as I've said, I think I want to work through some of the broader principles and you'll see from the talk, some of the history, but us to get a broader understanding of what the common principles are, some understanding of the funding environment and thinking about strategies for funding that will work for individual organizations, those that you might have been committed to and might have been might have built but also the global structures and the regional structures and um, i think our aim is to find a way in which these different um, pressures for funding reinforce one another rather than compete so that if you're raising money for your own local union it shouldn't be something that takes away from the money that we might think of raising for the national union or in fact for the global i think there's a case to be put where all of these things can can strengthen and reinforce one another. Um, those are the aims of the session, and I, I hope that meets your expectations. And just briefly, the outline of the talk. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about how the history of mostly the global students organizing. We've, I'm thinking about this as an entry point for the discussion from um, global uh, students and uh, looking at what our um, um, fundraising history tells us, and primarily it tells us that fundraising is, is a political rather than a technical task. That's the spoiler. Secondly, we need to think about what our story is. What is our narrative? What do we say about ourselves? Unless we know that, unless we have some agreement, we won't necessarily be on the same page. And uh, I can tell you from funding, the story that you tell, the confidence with which you tell it, how compelling it is, and the power of it is really important. The third question. I think is the one that gives us problems. Even if you believe in your story, is this story going to work? And I think the question we will find that it doesn't necessarily work, even if we believe in it. So what do we do then? If we principled activists, we don't change our story, but what do we do? How do we fashion it? And then lastly, I want to get to some ideas about uh, practical approaches, not only to meeting your budget in one year, but practical approaches to sustainable fundraising um, and sustainable financing rather, because fundraising is just a small part of financing, um, sustainable financing over the long, over the long term. Um, I'm going to stop share here. I'm not sure what view you have, but I don't have more slides now. I'm going to get into my talk. If you want to just note this down, there'll be four parts to my talk. Um, I will emphasize them, a brief history, um, something about how we put together the story and how we tell it. And thirdly, the question of does this work and what do we do? And fourthly, some ideas around the practical approaches to sustainable uh, financing. I'm going to stop my screen share and uh, ask if there are any questions or comments at this point or if I can proceed. Please indicate I've got on gallery view again. Gallery view again, I can see everyone. Okay. So I'll just summarize as I go. I'm happy to be interrupted, but I will try to finish this Giuseppe. So I should, I'm gonna to try to cut it a little shorter. I might not make it uh, in half an hour, 
But if we could just then perhaps the thing would be, I'll give my input. Um, we will then have uh, short uh, questions and a break, Giuseppe, you were suggesting for half an hour, which is good. I'm at friends, I'll go and have some pudding. Um, and then I'll come back again and uh, we will go into breakout sessions then and uh, face the questions. I'll put them up before we go into, into breakout. So my first point um, is, and this is partly why I was interested in who is here today. I think often with uh, fundraising, you'll find in your organization, you might leave that to the executive committee, someone specialized in, in fundraising or someone with that particular duty. And I think we don't realize something that the student movement has learned um, through hard, hard costs that actually fundraising is a very political question that touches every aspect of the work that we do. So um, I'm sure some of you were here with the history um, discussion on the history of student movement with uh, Mike Day. I'm not sure if Mike Day touched on, on this, but I've read his very informative uh, paper. He has a, a few, and I hope that you um, ask for that if you don't have it or if you've read it. But um, Mike Day points out how at the time of, during the First World War, that at the time at which the, um, the United Nations were formed, that there was a movement from the United Nations, but also others, um, when the, initially in 1940, the World Federation of Democratic Youth was set up. The WFDY was set up in about 1940, 1945, um, I think, but during and just after the war. And of course, the inspirations that brought together was what's the voice for peace? And is this something that young people can bring um, that our older generations have been fighting one another? Is there some freshness we can bring? And how do we bring together um, a group of, of democratic youth. The first student structure that was set up and opposed, I believe, by Stalin because he thought you'd need to have a, um, a, a student, he thought the student unions were a bourgeois idea, but um, the International Union of Students was uh, set up um, in 1946 and it was based on the same idea. Is there something that students share? Is there a conversation we have? Can we build a more peaceful world if we get to know one another, and if in fact we're able to visit one another, get to see one another, if a lot of the earlier student stuff for me was politically very naive, it was about if we visit one another and get to know one another, can we in fact do things that are, are similar? But the point about those initial movements, of course, is that they were unable to extricate themselves, I think, of the early politics of the Cold War that was just emerging after the First World War, at the time that the British Empire was collapsing and that we were seeing national liberation movements uh, all over Africa and the, the colonized world, and the time at which the colonial powers, the old colonial powers were really in decline. And you had strong powers, of course, Russia and America, then who considered that they'd won the war on behalf of everyone else, vying for influence and, and power. And the worry was, if I look at the funding, the, um, First, one of the first applications for funding for um, the, uh, the, first, uh, the first student meetings in the Czech Republic, first of all, the British students wanted to organize a meeting for students just after the, um, the World uh, Federation of Democratic Youth Movement in 1945. And the British Home Affairs Office was very reluctant to give them money. They asked for 1,250 pounds which I think was about 75,000 pounds in today's money. So a comparable amount you know, for a national meeting, we'd be looking for something perhaps a bit smaller, but they wanted that amount of money. And the British Foreign Office was very worried about the influence of the communists. And for the whole 40, the 1940s, there was this, a lot of the unions from Western Europe were involved because they were in, attracted to the idea of unity, but they were very worried, at least their foreign officers were, very worried about the engagement and the strength of students from uh, the former, from the Soviet republics, but countries like Hungary and the Czech Republic who were leaning towards joining with the, the communist bloc then. So the geopolitics of the area determined everything. All of the funding, of course, came from governments and, and foreign governments. Um, and only later on did it come through foundations, but that with a special twist. So there was very much a political agenda. 
but you could see that all of those student meetings that were set up were actually very high profile, high profile in a way we haven't been, which is in some ways a bad thing, but mostly I think a good thing. There were, you know, people went to student meetings in, um, in the Royal Albert Hall and shook hands with the Queen um, because she came to, to greet one of the student meetings. And they've had heads of states or people linked to, to ministers, to, to, to governments at those meetings. We're a lot lower profile. Um, the early student structures were, of course, also, also adopted by UNESCO. But I think the important thing for this discussion is that it's really clear that there was very significant engagement of geopolitics right through the 40s, with the Home Office being particularly, and the Americans that were coming in with funding, uh, and the Dutch and some European funding, were very worried about the influence of particularly Czech Republic, Hungary, and the USSR, and uh, China, and very worried about that. So that by the early 1950s, you already had a split in the International Union of uh, Students. And the, um, I think it was the um, um, International Students Conference was set up and their committee was COSEC, the, uh, um, the secretariat for, uh, for ISC, was set up for Western organizations, Western leaning organizations that disaffiliated from IUS. Um, and were worried about the fact that IUS funding was coming from um, the, the former Soviets and from states. The irony, of course, then, is that um, the, the funding for the ISC that came out in the late 60s came through some foundations in New York, based in New York and elsewhere. But the money, overwhelmingly, if not entirely, was all from the CIA. So you had a complete split of student politics determined by the geopolitics of, of the era. Now, this is probably known to, to all of you, and I'm sure Mike Day might have gone into it in, 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 a, great, um, in, a, in a great more uh, amount of detail. But the significant thing is, of course, there, is, um, is that funding is always a political agenda. And unless you really, really are clear about where you're going to get the funding, your agenda will be determined by what the funders want. And I think that's what we saw a lot of the fights in those early structures, whether it was the expulsion of, of the Yugoslav uh, foundation, you know, I mean, students or, or the others were all determined by what Stalin wanted or what the home and office was saying or how the Dutch students were reading the politics uh, of, of, of their countries, um, how the Czech students were responding to um, the post, the, 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 the old fascist movements uh, in, in, their, in their country. So, the broader geopolitics of the day was very significant. And at the same time, in many ways, there were really admirable ideas, I think about unity and trying to find student issues, but a lot of the student issues seemed to be relatively naive. They were on this idea of world peace um, based around uh, travel. So I think it was pretty new, but that for me, I think was really uh, interesting. And the question, um, I, I think the real point that we've seen there from that history and this was, I think, influential um, and very significant in our thinking for how do student, um, uh, how does a global student organization come together again without that interference, is how, in fact, can we come together in a way where we can be sure that our financing can be sustained, but that it won't be dominated by a political agenda, either coming from governments, as we've seen, but I think recently in the more neoliberal world, the question is, how can we be sure that we're not uh, dominated by corporate interests um, as well? Because we've seen from a lot of the larger foundations, significant funding for student work, um, particularly in the US. There is a paper on that that I'd be interested in sending if, if you would be interested to see, but it is funding for right-wing organizations. And in my experience, from what I've seen currently today, that uh, nationalist governments, again, countries like Poland and Hungary, or nationalist governments like Turkey, but certainly Russia, um, are putting a lot of money into their student organizations, I think, because they realize how significant it is. But we also fee see a very deliberate organizing on the right, um, where our funding is put into right-wing uh, students' organizations that have very, uh, or, and youth organizations that have very deliberate uh, messages of um, that are on opposed to ours and aren't that we necessarily agree with. So the question then for me from this history is what do we learn from it? 
Uh, what do we learn about our strengths and what do we learn about our weaknesses? I think the strengths, as always, we've seen are the unity um, of the student movement, that impulse towards unity, even if there isn't action, actual unity, but there's a strong impulse towards unity, finding common ground, uh, common issues, whether it is young people thinking about the future or students thinking about their immediate uh, issues and what they share in common with others. Um, active collaboration, where that was strong and active, it was a strength that broke down, of course. And then, of course, organizing around specific goals, depending on what they, what they were. The weaknesses, I think, that we've seen from this history um, were um, that the unions and the organizations were not, not independent at all, in fact, or not sufficiently independent. So independence becomes uh, something that is really crucial. The other thing that I saw, even though that there was a lot of show about democracy, and democracy was always important negotiating as syndicalist movements, the idea of representing the membership was key. But um, democracy for me was always a secondary question to the broader political ones. So the thing that I think remains important for us is a commitment to democracy in an inclusive and real sense where the, the difficult side of democracy is something that is taken seriously and not something that is seen as an inconvenience, but that democracy is embraced with its difficulties and that we find the strengths that we get from dealing with those, those different questions. Thirdly, I think the thing that we, that really fell down during the Cold War was that commitment to an internationalism. The very idea of internationalism was thought by the British and the Americans, uh, particularly to be a communist uh, uh, idea, an undesirable idea. Um, I think we've moved through that first reactionary stage and that a lot of people will think of internationalism as a good thing, but I think it is still something to be fought for. This is internationalism and international solidarity as opposed to uh, globalization and global uh, imperial dominance, which has referred, emerged in new and uh, different ways with new energies. I think to those three things, um, a commitment to independent action from students, um, a commitment to, um, to democratic uh, action, um, a commitment to um, um, internationalism, I think we have to add a fourth in this period, and that is a commitment to, um, to ecology and uh, to, to the planet. And I think that is something that uh, the student movement has shown leadership on, but that is something that I think all uh, student movements that, that um, would be attracted to our kind of international work would be taking on, on board. So um, I think I've seen these things in the, in the student uh, movement. I've got a, a slide on them, which I'm gonna put up because I think it's quite um, important. And it's in fact, the next slide. So I, th I think I want to put this quite squarely to you. And my question to you, it's a discussion in the, um, in, in the breakaway groups. Are these in fact our core values? Is there something we're missing? Or does this uh, provide a basis for us to think about a strategy for funding? So independent leadership and actions, independent movements, in fact, the question of independence is fundamental. Democratic practice and inclusion, democracy, International orientation, international in our orientation, and, and, and solidarity, international solidarity, and then commitments to ecology and the planet. I'm not sure if you're covered up as I am, given that you're seeing my screen, I'm a bit covered up on that side. But um, these for me, you can see them. These for me, I think are the four key things. I'd really like you to think about that, not just take it. There might in fact be something I'm missing, but you might say no, actually, Three of those matter, two don't, <laughs> or three matter, one don't, or there's something you've missed. Think about that for the group discussion. But um, my proposition to you is that this is quite fundamental to the story we tell about who we are and how we think about who we are when it comes to, to raising uh, funds. So this has been fundamental for uh, GSF uh, from the start. I think our experience has shown us actually that this is not necessarily a story that appeals to donors. There should be no surprises there. And I don't think that there is a, <laughs> um, it's something perhaps we should expect that as much as we think this is significant for ourselves and for building, the same story is not necessarily gonna convince the donors. I think for, um, 
for the for the present period, certainly the Open Society Foundations in the past, where it goes in the future, I'm not sure. I'm not longer there. This appealing, this story was appealing for Open Society Foundations and a few others, Wellspring Foundations and a few others. But this idea of of affirming the idea that the agenda belongs to you and that the best thing funders can do is to support you in your agenda. That for me is a wonderful uh, reflex. I don't think we can take that for granted anymore. I think some of the larger funders actually mistrust that in the same way that the, that, 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 that British uh, Foreign Office um, and the Home Office distrusted internationalism in the 40s. This idea is a step too far for many uh, um, of, the, of the current funders. And what they are far happier with is funding an agenda that they can control and that they, I'm just receiving my pudding people. So I'm not even gonna pretend I'm not. You can have a look if you like. So um, this is an agenda that I think um, doesn't appeal to everyone. And I think that leaves us with two questions. One is, I think, we must not give up the struggle to have this conversation wherever we can have it. The thing that really matters about youth politics and everyone should recognize it is that young people are on the forefront of struggle. Young people bring forward ideas that other, that other established organizations don't see. And the strength of, of young people is their uh, commitment to working democratically to uh, internationalist impulses. Um, and to independent action where they will work with their own priorities and to take on, on, on um, the, the, the bigger questions posed by ecology, climate change and uh, bio, biodiversity. Those, that's a discussion we cannot give up um, and we need to find ways to renew it and to have it. But I think the thing that we really left with when it comes to the traditional funders is that we might have to be dealing with more narrowly uh, subscribed agendas and that we might find climate change funders will speak to climate change issues only, and that um, funders dealing with race or gender might want to deal with those issues only. I think they interpret them far too narrowly, but um, that's, that's the way it is. I think tailoring the message to meet those kinds of uh, commitments that, fu that funders have is necessary. A lot of those funders, I know from my own engagement in funding, are dealing with their own internal constraints. So you might find people who would love to support you, but actually they're dealing with quite a, quite a tight uh, framework for strategy that doesn't allow them to fund beyond uh, what they've got. So I think our experiences uh, at, at this level might be quite varied, but for me, those are the bigger um, questions that I think confront not only the Global Student Forum and the national platforms, but I think they confront each uh, individual organization as well. So what um, I think is very significant for us there is to think about how do we change and to which degree do we change our message. Um, I, I think I know in, in the funding for the Global Students Forum, we're trying to do both. We try to have the broader conversation wherever we can have it. Um, and I think we have been, had limited success so far. If we have success with the broader questions, that will depend on the relationship we have with those funders. Um, and it might take two years to actually get to the point where we can have the real conversation. That is still necessary to have. And I think all I can say to you is that I think you need an organized way to do that um, and that it needs to be the responsibility of your whole leadership structure and engage the membership as much you, as, you, as you can to have that conversation. You cannot leave this, um, the funding work, to a fundraiser or one treasurer or one person to do all of the work. It has to remain a key political responsibility for everyone in the movement. So the general funding uh, discussion, I think, needs to be had because it advances an under understanding of what society we want and what kind of planet we want to live on and how we live on it together. That's the big discussion, and it's one we cannot lose. However, the funders that are only concerned with a small part of that story, whether it be useful things like gender-based violence or, or anti-racism, Decolonizing, decolonizing the curriculum or climate change or human rights um, or student debt, absolutely pick up on those agendas as long as we realize we can't get too narrowly focused on those things or go only where the money is. That I think is always the biggest, uh, the, the, the biggest question. So I think 
um, those are the 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 essential insights uh, for me in, in, the, in, the, in the broad terms when it comes to how we shape tactics for raising funds. This is where it gets really interesting. And I, I, I think I want to spend the last 10 minutes thinking about those um, and then open it up for, for questions. But I think that this is probably what you've all come for. And I want to put forward, um, I think, four um, approaches four ideas that we always, that we need to think about developing together. Some of them, two of them certainly might be quite uh, challenging, but I, I hope that they will make uh, sense to you. And I think if you have this responsibility on your structure, um, I'd like you to think about it from that point of view. But even if you don't, I'd like you to think about this needs to be the question that you would raise with your, uh, with your, with your secretariat or um, those that are involved with uh, fundraising in, um, um, in, in, your, in your structure. So the first one is, I think, um, with the funding that we do have, some of you here I know have relatively committed funding. Some of the platforms do. That's an excellent thing. That might be quite specific. Historically, there might be reasons for it, um, but I think we need to understand the landscape of the current funding. And I think what we need to put forward as a suggestion for our structures, but possibly something we can do collectively is to look at that in closer detail. I think we need to look at the funding that we, that does exist. I think we should be doing that, uh, that work together, uh, putting up a, together a project where we can look at our funding that works at a global level, at a regional level, and at more local levels, and ask who are these funders that are committed, why and what do they want? I think it would be very good for us to map and understand that. And then the questions there, the strategic questions there, are how can we take that conversation a step further? Is there a way in which we can develop that conversation so that we can be more um, assertive about the agenda that we want and be sure that we're not following an agenda that they might not want? So the first one is absolutely do not uh, neglect at any point the traditional funding base that you do have. Spend the time with the funders that you have. Develop the human relationships as much as the reporting on paper, but develop the human relationships that will sustain that. I think that will remain key. It's just absolutely the way things work. The second one I think that we've learned and that we have yet to open up and develop uh, as, as at the level of the, 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 the Global Student Forum, some of you might have experienced this on the, of this on the regional platforms or with your, um, your, your um, um, individual organizations and that there might be uh, dedicated funders funding specific issues. They might say, yes, we like what you do, but we can't fund all of that. We only do climate change or we only do gender issues or we only do uh, health related issues. And, and, um, and I think that, um, the important thing is to have an approach to that funding where you can pull in the people in your ranks that have some expertise and some knowledge there, use them to work on that, but make sure that that doesn't dominate your whole um, agenda. I've just had a very important question from Jenna Berry, what's the pudding? I don't know, it's kind of cake and cream uh, and I hope it's got alcohol. It's, I don't know what it is, but it looks beautiful, it's pink. So I'm going to get to it in a bit. Um, so I, I think the second one is the, the, the specific funders that will only fund smaller things. Absolutely go with those. But the important thing is for me strategically is not to get hijacked entirely by that agenda. If funders are funding climate change only, and it's, let me tell you, it's a disease that seems as much as, as co contagious as COVID. It's a good thing, but I, I, I'm not sure that will last. You know, it might do. But there's, uh, I think, a pretty um, intense commitment to climate change, and a lot of funders just want to do climate change and nothing else. So the idea is to engage with that without letting that become your whole uh, agenda, and you have to find a way to keep uh, uh, a step, a step or two ahead there. Um, the third one that I wanted to remember, I think, that I wanted to mention, I think, is going to be the more difficult uh, one. When I uh, held this, uh, Holst spoke to you. I I think she spoke about the, um, your, the syndicalist tradition and what you might have in, in common with uh, trade unions. 
Um, and of course, what we know is, is that trade unions are employed and people are able to put money, their own money into their organizations. And that's what gives them their independence. As membership-based organizations, I'm not sure we can get away from that. We all know that students are unemployed, but I think the, the strategic question that I want to put on the table here is where we have regional platforms or individual uh, platforms that are raising money for student work. Is there an argument that we can put forward to say, can we put forward a small percentage for international collaboration and work? I think that that will not only strengthen the international work, but it will strengthen the local work. Um, I think we've seen with all of the best student work that it is strong as it is strong on the local issues, but also in as much as it is able to act in solidarity with other student organizations and struggles elsewhere, reach out to them and make those kinds of connections. The only way you can really regenerate the, uh, uh, the, the struggles that you have in your local level is through speaking to students with other struggles elsewhere, learning from their victories, learning from their, their defeats. So that international work is very important. And I think that there might, <clears throat> there needs to be a conversation that we can start and continue about how we can find ways to sponsor, even if it's very, very small, but the work of either at a regional, but certainly a global level, by putting forward from all of the membership quite small amounts. It doesn't have to, you don't have to fund all of the global work, but if you are funding a portion of it, it puts the global structure in a strong position to say, we raise X amount from our membership, we're looking for more funding. It's a very, very different uh, conversation. Um, and also it would hold the, the global structures far more accountable if you're able to do that. So there might be many and different ways to do that. I don't think only one way to do that, but I think it's a conversation that we need to keep having until we find uh, ways to do that. My um, um, proposition there, I think, is that if our strategy collectively is to improve the environment uh, for funding students' organizations overall across the board, that putting money aside for the international work is something that is a direct contribution to your own work and not something that is there in competition. So that's the third uh, area. First, um, develop your, your, um, your established funding base, the conventional one, develop it. Third, look for funders that are focused on specific issues. Find a way to meet uh, what they want without giving up your broader commitments. And the third one is, is there a way in which we can contribute to one another, essentially, not only in terms of work or like the academy such as this, where we can come together and share, but is there a way in which we can share um, a, a portion of our finances to strengthen our common uh, and shared goals uh, globally and, and regionally? And the fourth one, I think, is an area that uh, will also take a lot of developing. But for me, this is how else can we raise, um, how else can we raise uh, funds? Um, and um, is there a way in which, this has to be the question, is there a way in which we can leverage our base, the membership, the amount of students that we have um, and turn this into something that will be a, um, a way that, that would help us generate more money? And one of the ideas, um, that we were thinking about and discussing was the idea of an international uh, student's card. Possibly that might have a deal with a bank and look at discounts for travel and discounts for things, cover advertising for certain companies, but in ways that is controlled, I, I think, by the student movement and provides some funding uh, for the student movement at the same time. So it's a step into a more, at one level, more commercial uh, direction that deals with sponsorships and, and vouchers. Um, but something that is able to provide a, a portion of um, money for the student movement. Now, interestingly here, um, if we look at the history, the ISEC, the International Student uh, um, Identity Card, um, still exists and seems to have a deal with about 140 countries. It's got a partnership with uh, MasterCard. Um, it's linked to a range of travel companies and that if you have this ISEC card, there'll be discounts for all sorts of things on travel and, and things as well. It's very hard to tell from their information how they constituted, whether it's a company, it seems to be an NGO, but it's really hard to tell where their money is, how much they make. Um, 
there, I've looked at their records. They seem to have a turnover of a few million um, every year, but that may or may not be all of money. Um, I think so. The question that we have is, is that uh, um, is that something a group we should be looking at developing a relationship with? Do we set up a, our own international credit card? Are there other ideas that we can use? Identity card, rather. Are there other ideas that we can use that provide some sort of um, um, benefits for for members, but at the same time generate um, uh, generate uh, um, revenue in some way that really leverages the membership and affords the the um, the student organisations the level of of independence and autonomy that they wish, as well as the um, resources that they need to build uh, the movement uh, going forward. So. Um, that's my brief input. Um, I wanted to pause at this stage to see if there were questions uh, and ideas. I have um, three questions uh, for uh, discussion. And I, I think, Giuseppe, you'll have to let us know whether you think we go into three groups or, or two. Um, but I'd like us just to address those questions and then come back and debrief. But the idea would be, what are what are the, the answers to those questions are things that we'd be thinking of ways to take forward um, suggestions, either for the Global Student Forum or for the structures that we're engaged with that might strengthen the, uh, their thinking around funding and funding strategy. Um, so that's what we'd like to achieve. Could I just see if there are questions or comments at this point? Okay, what, what I'm going to do is you can think about it. I will put up, um, we do share screen again. So that's where we left it. Um, look at the four values because the four question is on them. The, four, the first question is on them. Independence, democracy, internationalism, and uh, commitments to, to the planet. Those are four, four values. Are there others? The session questions I wanted to put to you. Firstly, is that are these the core question, the core values we share? Secondly, how can we ensure that raising funds for regional or global work doesn't compete with raising funds for individual or member organizations? And the third question is what practical ideas do you have for improving the overall environment for funding student organizations. And this would include GSF individual member organizations, as well as the regional and global uh, structures. Um, so we'll come back to those three questions. Um, I'm not sure if you want a minute just to note them down, but I'll put them up at the start of the, the next uh, section as, as well. I'll stop screen sharing now. I also noted them down in the chat in case someone wants to. Also, um, if I may suggest, um, I would like to suggest to take the break now so that uh, we can go into the, um, that do, do not disconnect. My suggestion to everyone is to not disconnect from the call so that we can then come back directly to the breakout rooms if there are no questions right now. Of course, please feel free to make questions directly to you right now. And then we go in these breakout rooms. Uh, and I will also again screen share the, the questions from Yug. Uh, Yug will do the same in, in the other session, in the other um, breakout room. And so we can have a bit of discussion. Uh, I don't know how long. I don't know. Do, do you want to, to keep it 20 minutes? Half an hour, perhaps. Yeah. Half an hour and then come back. And then we come back to the plenary uh, all together. So we can have a bit of, uh, of exchange. We will have uh, maybe. Um, a person that will report from each group, and but also the others will be free, of course, to to comment. Um, so that's how I would suggest to proceed and now take a twenty minutes, uh, half an hour break. If uh, no one is. Should we decide on a, an exact time, Giuseppe? Um, Twenty-five minutes would come bring us back on the hour. Is that all right? Perfect. So we... it's three. So we will yeah. be back at three in Central Europe. 
and we finish, um, try to finish uh, um, one hour after that, 30 minutes plus discussion and then a, a wrap up and we finish an hour later, okay? Sounds perfect to me. What about you? I hope the others also agree with this bit of shadow. So I hope there's no active opposition to it. Thank you, Wesam. So, okay, I, I suggest to everyone not to, to disconnect. Um, so stay connected. Just uh, let's turn off all the mics and the videos, and then uh, we will be back at uh, three Europe Central Time in 25 minutes from now. See you in a bit, and thanks again, Hugh. Thanks, Giuseppe. Would you like me just to jump into some of the, the issues um, <clears throat> that, that we uh, picked up and then you can follow on and um, we'll have some discussion and then think about a, a sum up. So of in course. some way, thank you. But predictably and thankfully in a way we didn't stick to the questions as a one, two, three. We kind of came in firing from all sides, but we had I, some very useful inputs from uh, um, Northern Ireland from uh, Guyana and from Zambia and from Ghana and on the All Africa Students Union as well. And we all spoke about, um, people spoke about their experience with uh, uh, funding and how the funding works. So it was very practical actually, but really, uh, really interesting. Um, so first of all, on, on the Northern Ireland side, I think what, uh, not only Northern Ireland, but the whole of Ireland, right, Jenna? But um, I, I think the thing that's significant, oh, I forgot about Denmark as well. We had Denmark as well as Ireland. Um, so the similarities there, of course, I think is, is, the, is the depth of the, um, the institutional support at that level and the fact that there is um, real contributions made to, to student work and to the national. And the situation's almost reversed, is that the, it seems as if there's more money at the national and that goes to some of the um, money is allocated at that level and it goes to some of the, the, the individual unions. So there is a structure for that. That's the point. 
And I think that's, that suggests to me, as the other examples showed that we dealt with, that in fact, there is something to talk about with the MOUs, with the arrangements, with governments and with the acts, that there might be space for advocacy and discussion there to think about not only how individual organizations are funded for improving those mechanisms, but also for potentially raising some of the questions of the importance for an international exchange. Is there a way to have the conversation where we can start to build these into the initial agreements and think of um, ways of, of funding the, the global and, and, and the regional work in, in more structured ways? So the um, African examples, of course, were also very uh, illuminating, and it does seem certainly with Ghana, but also with um, um, the experience of Sanasu in, in Zambia, that there actually is an, an active engagement with uh, government. Ghana particularly has been active in supporting ASU from the time of, of the revolution, uh, independence revolution of Jerry Rawlings, but it seems to have remained, um, has paid salaries for, um, um, the, for members of the secretariat in all Africa Students' Union, but also, unlike the, the, the Cold War and the, the British and, and, and the Russians, has been less uh, um, in, in, in interfering in its engagement with uh, the, the, the political directions, I think, that the, the Students' Union has taken, which is really good. And then apart from the core costs that come, um, additional funding is raised um, um, for, um, for issue-based um, issues. Um, Delisa was there from the um, um, Ghana National, Guyana National Students Organization in, in the Caribbean, which is relatively new. Um, and Delisa is, having, Delisa is having a lot of discussions with government partners and working through some of those dynamics. And that was really interesting. But it also struck me that there is clearly room for a lot of exchange between members, because a lot of the, the established experience in countries like um, like Ghana um, and, and Zambia and Denmark and, and Ireland could be of interest certainly to Delissa, but might be useful for her in her advocacy for the, um, the National Students Organization um, there as well. Um, yeah, and they're all, they're, they're different mechanisms seems to be worked out in the access to how um, the, the national is funded either with some kind of uh, dues from, uh, from the um, members or in fact some arrangement that works the other way around. So that was useful, but I think the thing for me that I really noticed is that uh, the some engagement with those formal agreements uh, for thinking about regional and, and national work might be quite important. And always, always, always there's room for improving those mechanisms. Because even where there is a, a helpful, potentially helpful mechanism, sometimes the money will go from, say, the, the government account or the national union into the university account, and then they hold that back until they get certain, until the students behave themselves, I think, and then they will release the money. So that, I think, if, if there's one thing that GSF could do is possibly think through some kind of joint program to think of policy at that level, um, that we could think of policy changes that it would improve those cash flow to strengthen the kind of independence that we that we have, but also to think about these kinds of, of arrangements for funding um, student bodies in countries where they don't exist in quite the same way. So if we could model best practice there and particularly do that, that might be quite good, you know, I think to do. I'm not sure if anyone else from my group wants to add something or correct a an egregious misrepresentation of what was said. Please speak up. No, that's good. Thanks, you. Thank you, Giuseppe. Do go ahead. Yeah, in reality, uh, I would like to leave the floor to Samuel because uh, Samuel uh, was available to, to report from our group, and then I will give my perspectives later. Yes, um, thank you, Giuseppe. So um, largely for our group, I mean, we, we, we understand how, I mean, the issue of fundraising is for almost every student team, um, I mean, for tons of reasons. So looking at um, the first question about um, the core values, whether they reflect the, the, the value of every other student team and then as a member of the GSF or as a member of the other student team, for instance. Um, we do agree that largely some of these, uh, most of these core values do reflect, but may not necessarily be applicable to all because, I mean, 
it may not be a priority for almost every member union to, uh, even though it should be, but um, I mean, some may not necessarily um, consider, for instance, uh, uh, protecting the climate as a key issue, right? As maybe they may want to prioritize the, 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 the access to higher education or perhaps poverty alleviation or um, the alleviation of hunger and other issues. And then on question two, um, we also mentioned that um, in trying to ensure that, I mean, it doesn't necessarily become a competition to access funding between, let's say, the all um, regional student unions and then the global students forum and, um, and then the member unions. One thing that can be done is that we try to really um, align the actions of the member unions together with that of the regional unions. So that um, in applying for funding, the, for example, AFSO is able to understand that this member union needs these kind of opportunities or this kind of funding opportunity to be able to address these issues. Then the um, AFSO can access and connect the local union or the member union with the funding opportunity. And then also the, the All Africa Student Union, for instance, can also allow a, a guide member unions on how, how to be able to access some of these fundings so that uh, it does not look like uh, we are in competition for the same kind of funding to do sort of, I mean, the same kind of job. Then I mean, largely it's, uh, it's that defeats the purpose of uh, working together. And we, we also indicated that, uh, for instance, the Global Students Forum, I think, um, should also be able to open up and then, uh, I mean, open member unions to funding opportunities that would help them also um, address local actions as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Samuel. Um, yeah, uh, something that uh, uh, I wanted to underline uh, also is the, the great value uh, of our um, variety of uh, not just positions, but also approaches to some problems. And the fact that uh, uh, having a slightly different starting positions does not mean uh, not managing to cooperate, neither managing to propose um, also a coherent and clear way of uh, or in perspective of action to, to potential donors and partners. I was making the, the, the example in particular of the European uh, situation when uh, two organizations, uh, OBESU and ESU, uh, focused a lot on the migrant issue uh, with the help of Open Society. That is uh, one of the key donors, of course, uh, at the global level and also at the regional levels, so continental levels. And uh, um, this enriched a lot the, also the national membership and especially the national membership that was not at the time engaged in migrant issues because they saw new opportunities thanks to this strong partnership about their umbrella and a foundation that was also with not just money but also with good advice, good proposals, good ways of structuring the work. And this meant uh, an expansion of the, of the functions of many unions at the time. And so I feel that this, this is a, also an example I, I lead directly both as a national union member and as a, uh, as a, a regional platform member uh, in Obesu. But I feel that many of these things and probably in an even more powerful, stronger way can be done at the global level because of the fact that now we cover the almost the entire planet and that uh, so potentially donors from everywhere. And uh, in theory, we can talk about everything with expertise because we have member unions that work on so many different things uh, and uh, that have also direct experience of many problems. For example, the, the, the problem of environment here in Europe, we have great expertise 
uh, as unions with the mobilizational aspects, because also thanks to Fridays for Future, to Extinction Rebellion, the movements that were created uh, in the last uh, in the last years against the, the climate change. But it becomes something different when you can put together in your platform and your platform de development expertise from countries that, for example, now are living the certification or from countries that now are living the, the um, also the, the bad social aspects of uh, the economic production model. So with the, the exploitation of land, exploitation of workers, uh, that's something, for, for example, in the Western countries, you, 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 you need someone else to, to explain to you because we do not leave these directly, for example. So nothing, just to say that I, I see the opportunities. Also, we, we uh, as you could have understood from Samuel and my uh, report, uh, we didn't stick to the questions too much, but I think uh, that uh, together with yours, uh, this provided a, a, a very nice picture of all the interesting uh, problems and opportunities coming from this new environment we are developing and from the environment that can be developed to, with funders, together with funders and potential supporters of the student movement globally. Thanks, um, uh, Giuseppe, I, th I think, um, and Samuel for that input from that group. Bismarck, I think we're gonna move on to, because I know you from our group, so we're gonna move on to um, questions, comments, filling the gaps. Um, do jump in, Bismarck, nice to hear from you. Yes, thank you, Hugh. Uh, I just want to um, pass a comment and to sort your thoughts on this. A lot of student unions have very ambitious projects. For instance, they, they promise very huge projects and uh, to their uh, constituents when they are campaigning for positions, especially at the presidency level. And so when they come into office, they are under, under pressure to uh, deliver. And most often than not, the, the dues or the levies they, they, they receive from these students that are paid to them from their students, um, either from the university level or the national levels, are not enough to undertake such projects. And so they are forced to sort for, seek funding. And most of this funding, it's readily made available to them by political uh, officers, people in the national politics, say the political parties, uh, their general secretaries, who will want them to uh, um, want to leverage on their students' um, numbers uh, to retain political power. And so they, 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 be, they now infiltrate the decision-making, uh, the type of policies that they do. For instance, if the government, for instance, pass a policy that perhaps is not favorable to, to the students and to the citizens, these student leaders are most often pressured to issue statements in support of such policies uh, to the detriment of their students. Uh, what are your thoughts on the way forward for student leaders and um, secretariat on how to handle these type of uh, temptations? Thanks for that, Bismarck. I'm not sure if any others want to come in. Um, is that a clap from Giuseppe or not a hand up? Um, I have a few thoughts on that, but let's see if anyone else um, does want to come in with contribution or questions at this point. I'm going to move to um, thinking about our last moves. Hold on a sec. Um, look, I'm, I think this has been very rich. I, I think the first thing that I, I would note, um, picking up on, on some of the comments, is that I think we do need to do more joint work, and this needs to be shared work. Um, and I, I still think, as I, as I started off with the assumption, that there is a, an important link 
between um, the kinds of your individual arrangements, peculiarities, victories, challenges, and the challenges that we face uh, at the level of how to fund the global platforms or how to fund the regional uh, uh, platform. I think that that's quite important, and I still think that there's a shared bit of work um, that needs to be done to understand the environment fully, um, and that to um, and to 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 change the environment so that it is more open to funding students' work. Um, I still do think that the key things to be pushing for is independent student-led work. I think we've all said that. We've seen that there's always an impulse for those that fund, whether it's the institution um, or, or, or the government or the companies to, to try to turn, the, to turn on the agenda. So I think that's one of those important things and that's a level at which we need to, uh, to, to find ways to support one another all the time. I think where we've got a big plus is where there already is a commitment to that idea. And it does seem at least with, I think, uh, the, the funding for some of the structures, certainly ASU, I think possibly to a certain extent, Commonwealth Students Association, I'm not sure there's too much um, interference there, SU at certain levels, but there's always limits to that, right? You know, so it doesn't mean that there is really a, a free space for students. But I think, um, an area I think that would, I would add to the four different approaches that I outlined. Remember I said, look at your traditional funding, um, look at issue-based funders, look at the potential for, for dues, and then look at ideas that can leverage the base and create some sort of uh, opportunity that is based on the, on the members, either their future buying power, depending on who you're talking to in discussion with say groups like MasterCard, is there anything we can do through a renewed engagement with the idea of an international student card that might give people uh, discounts, but also generate some funding for, for student movements? Um, I think there's also the policy, um, the, the policy work. In terms of the agreements that we have with governments, we need to be learning from good practice where this uh, does exist. But I think it might be that GSF, can we can find a way to, to support a more serious bit of work on, on that, a description of some of those arrangements so that um, we have a resource we can draw on and that people like Delissa, who is leading a new formation, a new structure and speaking to a government is able to draw on the experience of the student movement more broadly across the, uh, across the, 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 the globe to say these are the kinds of things that are, are, are done else, elsewhere. Um, so I think that is, those for me are the ideas that seem to come to, uh, to, to come to the fore. Um, I just wondered if there were other comments and thoughts in terms of our general conclusions for the day. Gideon, do come in Gideon. Gideon, you might need to unmute or something. I saw your hand. Yes. Um, Thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes. I first want to, I want to add up to, I want to attempt the question posed by Bismarck and to acknowledge you for having well answered the question. But to add, I think that this, this discussion is mainly about um, raising funds. And when it comes to students' organization and member unions of GSF, I think that it's always a collaboration between students and the government of the day. Whether you like it or not, whether you want to go the radical way or whether you want to always go on the negotiation table with the government, whether you like it or not, you don't run a student organization alone. And so the, the state is always a major stakeholder. So for me, even if we are taking deals and members are paying the deals on time, and the dues is even enough to run organization. I think it is very okay for the government or for the states to help the student unions or the student organization. The problem is, is about the leaders. I think the leaders should get to the point where whether the state funds them or not, they are able to stand on their grounds to make decisions. Like during the, the breakout session, like you, you, you rightly said, someone indicated that the government of Ghana 
has been paying the um, ticket, the, has been finding the secretariat of ASU all these years. Yes, does that mean that if the government of Ghana is doing something wrong against students of Ghana, ASU cannot stand up against the, the state of Ghana just because it is the government of Ghana that pays the officers of ASU? So it is about the thinking. I think that um, whether we like it or not, it is a responsibility of the state to help its nationals who happens to be students, young students who mostly are not working. And so we can see because when the state fancy, or of course, the government is always a political party that wins power. So whether a president or not, he's, he's still from a political party. The help will come. It is the students who have to be strong and know that they are constituents voted for them for a particular reason. And they ought to stand on their grounds to face the government and not to always um, bring us communiques to support the government just because the government is funding them. So as far as funding is concerned, the government of, the, of every nation ought to fund those student unions. But that should not be a reason for those student unions to side with the government or with that particular political party just because of those funds. Thank you. Thanks for that input. I think we'd all agree. Um, part of the problem becomes when the government isn't quite good willed. So it's good. I mean, you have a good experience in Ghana, and I think the Ghana ex Ghanaian experience is a bit exceptional. Um, so you might, I'm sure you have your complaints about the government, and I'm sure I can think of my complaints about the government, but actually, in this respect, uh, it's a relatively positive experience. So we'll see now, even for instance, in, in, in the, um, the UK, for instance, which tries to present itself as an open-minded and liberal dispensation always, has always been opposing um, independent um, student work. At, at times it'll provide something and some funding, but we're at a moment in the UK now where I think even the independence of the, of the BBC, which has presented itself as a, an independent broadcaster, is turning itself into a government mouthpiece. So the student movements, are either strapped from, from by, by cash or find themselves in a, in a tighter, narrow space. I think there's still quite a lot of independence there, but those days might well be limited. So I don't think we can trust governments to always follow that democratic impulse. But what you point to, which is really interesting, is that it's a question of the health of the democracy of the whole country, actually, and which is why student movements and student politics can't stand aside from engaging with uh, strengthening democracies inside their own uh, countries. So the tactics and the battles and the un and the the campaigns that student union picks, student unions pick do need to have an echo with the broader population um, in in a way because it is a question of the health of the national uh, democracy. I think as well. But thanks very much for that input. Um, Marwan, I see. I'm not sure if you're. Um, um, Mike is good, but there's some comments in the chat um, talking about GSF helping um, to build a, a better environment, I think, am I understanding correctly, for, uh, for funding and provide support and connection in that way. Colleagues, thank you very much. Are there any other comments and uh, thoughts? Let me just remove share screen so I can see you all.